Assassin's Creed games aren't exactly known for being well optimized, with the exception of Rock of course, but Assassin's Creed Unity might be taking it to a whole new level. Unity was supposed to mark the new generation of Assassin's Creed games for the 10 next gen consoles, and Ubisoft spent a lot of time and effort making the new version of their Anvil Next engine, as well as recreating Paris during the period of the French Revolution down to the smallest details, in addition to introducing a new and more fluid parkour system. Yet, instead of Assassin's Creed Unity becoming known as the greatest game in the series, it ended up being an absolute utter mess on release, with the game being full of hilarious gameplay bugs, as well as some of the most horrifying graphics bugs I've ever seen. Not to mention the performance issues on both PC and consoles, but yeah, you get it, it was quite the mess. Thankfully, Ubisoft realized that they needed a bit more time to finish their game, so they released several patches, which fixed most of the bugs, and game devs never made the mistake of releasing an unfinished game ever again. Even though Ubisoft fixed most of the bugs, the game is still quite demanding, especially on PC, even nowadays 10 years later. It asks for a whopping GTX 680, which was quite a beast back in 2014. So can we even open it on something that is much worse than a GTX 680, something that's as low end as Intel HD graphics for example? You're goddamn right we can, so let's begin. This is my Lenovo Legion Y5 trainee, which I know it isn't exactly bad for Assassin's Creed Unity, it has a pretty decent Intel Core i7 as well as a GTX 1050, which is more or less as powerful as the GTX 680, the only known thing in this laptop is the i7's integrated graphics, the legendary Intel HD Graphics 630, which we will test in Assassin's Creed Unity. To make the game use the Intel HD 630 instead of the GTX 1050, I went to the graphics settings in the Windows Display settings, then I went to the game's directory, chose the game's executable and set it to power saving, so my GTX 1050 will be taking a rest. As for in-game settings, I'm using the low settings obviously, I mean do you really expect me to use high settings on Intel HD graphics in a game that asks for a GTX 680? I even went as far as disabling the blood effects just to be sure, and I'm using the lovely 640x400 resolution with stretching disabled, and the game was surprisingly playable actually, at least for a low-end gamer who also uses Intel HD graphics. I mean, it didn't feel too laggy despite running at around 20 FPS most of the time, which drops to as low as 15 FPS in more demanding areas with a lot of NPCs, but hey, at least when you're climbing buildings or looking down or up, you could see those 30 plus FPS. I saw the worst FPS when synchronizing. So yeah, it's not exactly a smooth like butter experience, but then again, considering how notoriously demanding Assassin's Creed Unity is, I was expecting like less than 5 FPS, so this isn't a bad start. Still, what can we do to get better FPS? Well, not much unfortunately. I didn't find any low-end mods for the game, even the Nexus mods, and most people simply suggest to use Ragnos 1997's low specs experience too. What I'm going to say now might be controversial, but um, low specs experience kinda sucks. I mean, I get its purpose of modifying the settings or configs of games, and I think it can be quite useful if you can't decide what settings to use, but I find it a little bit ridiculous that you have to pay if you want to use like extremely low settings, when everybody you can do it manually for completely free provided you have the necessary knowledge. I get that the guy behind the tool needs to make money somehow but um yeah, 
I did, however, find this team discussion from 2015, which uh, suggests a modification of the ACU Dota and I config file for better performance. The config file in question is in your documents folder, Assassin's Creed Unity, and you can open it with Notepad, of course. You can also make a backup of the config file in case you want to revert the changes later. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna mark all these values from the Steam post and we're gonna copy them. Then, in the config file, we're gonna mark all the values from the vsync one down to the tessellation one and we're going to simply paste what we've copied. That's it! I will share the link to the post for those interested in reading what some of those values do and the values themselves in the video description as well. Interestingly enough, the game also has a second config file, as you may have noticed, the gfxsettings.acu.xml file, which you can also open with Notepad. Here, we can set the reflections value from 2 to 0, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and don't bother setting the registered values to false, because nothing changes, trust me, I've tested it. And guess what? Even after modifying both config files, the FPS and graphics are exactly the same as before, so that did absolutely nothing. Yeah, I've also tried disabling the shadows, I tried setting the values that control the quality of the shadows to false and off in both config files, I tried setting them to minus one, I even tried setting the config files to read only to make sure it applies, but um, nothing worked. I mean, come on Ubisoft, if you couldn't optimize your game properly, why don't you at least allow us to disable those stupid shadows? They didn't even bother optimizing this game for weaker hardware. So yeah, as I said earlier, there isn't much you can do to get better FPS. Well, I guess you can try looking down as much as you can, you can lower the resolution to 320x200 and make Assassin's Creed Unity look like a Game Boy game. Not sure how you want to play in this resolution anyway, cause almost all of the text is now completely unreadable. By the way, for those asking about Windowed or Windowed Borderless mod, well, you're gonna get the exact same performance as in full screen mode. As for some worthless scaling, well, I had to lock the FPS to 15 with Driver Tuner and I'm using MSFG 2.3 mode X4 to at least try to upscale it to 60 FPS as well as the integer scaling type, which is quite ugly I know, but it's also very lightweight. Yes, I am aware that you can make worse scaling use the dedicated GPU for the upscaling from the preferred GPU options, so just show you guys that I'm not using the GTX 1050, okay? I had to run the game in the wonderful 320x200 resolution that we saw earlier in normal windowed mode because the performance in windowed borderless was awful for some reason and um, yeah, this is it guys. If you thought the game looks horrible at 320x200, well, how does it look with this crappy scaling type and warping for the cherry on top? Well, at least I can still recognize where the bad red guys and slash the absolute living out of them without any input latency, amazingly enough. By the way, guess what? Even this gorgeous resolution and scaling type aren't enough for 60 FPS with worse scaling on the Intel HD 630, as this 60 slash 15 FPS will drop as soon as you go to a very demanding area, and during synchronization, you will see as low as 40 slash 10 FPS. So are 60 FPS possible in Assassin's Creed Unity on Intel HD graphics? Well, it is possible as long as you play in the 320x200 resolution and look down or up in demanding areas and don't do any synchronizations, but uh, yeah, this is the best that we're gonna get. So now that we know that the beloved Intel HD 630 not only can open Assassin's Creed Unity without destroying itself, but also run it in a way, it's time to see if weaker Intel HD graphics can also run this poorly optimized monster. And by weaker Intel HD graphics, I mean those that take the meaning of potato GPU to a whole new level. This is my poor old Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop, which has a wonderful Intel Celeron N2840 processor that cries as soon as it tries to compete with almost any other CPU from 2006 and onwards, and of course, the star of the show, the Intel HD graphics page trail. The Intel HD graphics of this Celeron are slower than even the GeForce 210. They are almost 5000 times slower than the game's minimum system requirements GPU. Also, before watching the game, 
I'm gonna run this little upgold memory reduct because this laptop has measly 4GB of RAM and the game asks for 6 and would you look at that, it actually opens the game. At first I got silky smooth 2 FPS in the start screen which is not really a good sign let's be real. After the helix selection screen, it seemed to be loading with no issues, but then the game said screw this and decided to crash with no error message. So I tried it again, this time with the low settings and the free training by 200 resolution, including the config file streaks that I mentioned earlier, and this time it did made it to the very beginning of the game with no crashing, and it was actually running the cutscene pretty well, ignoring the single digit FPS. But of course the game had to crash again. So after that I deleted my save files, restarted the game yet again, it loaded with no issues once again and everything was good until the bell started ringing. Yeah, I also tried using windowed and windowed borderless mode and it was still crashing. I even tried running it in the good old Windows 7 instead of 10, but um, look what happens when you try to run this game on this Intel HD graphics in Windows 7. Oh, black screen. Hello. Game. Come on. So yeah, as much as we would have liked to be able to play Assassin's Creed Unity on this Celeron and its integrated GPU, it's impossible. But if you delete your save files once again and go to your bathroom at 3am and scream to your mirror, I want to play Assassin's Creed Unity on my potato PC, three times on a Friday the 13th during a full moon, you could actually make it all the way with no crashing. This is a forgotten footage of me playing Assassin's Creed Unity on the low end laptop. I wasn't using the config streaks back then, not like it would have been a night to day difference anyway. It's so strange that now the game just refuses to work without crashing on my potato laptop since back then I was able to make it all the way to the beginning without too much issues besides the 4 FPS that I was getting, which actually caused my character to get stuck on the ground or flying mid-air because the physics become completely glitched in these extremely low frame rates. Oh, and don't you dare quit the game and then restart it later, because it will crash as usual no matter what. I've come to the conclusion from other videos that the crashing also happens on the Intel HD 4000 and 2500, basically all Intel HD graphics based on the 3rd gen Ivy Bridge architecture, which also includes the little N2840 Intel HD graphics page rail interestingly enough. I'm not too sure what's causing it, it's definitely not the RAM in my opinion as I've seen the game running on Celeron N4000, N4100 and Intel UHD 600 with 4 gigs of RAM without any issues you know besides the low FPS. I think the Intel HD 4000 and other iGPUs based on its architecture might be lacking a DirectX 11 instruction or 2 that Unity requires, even with the latest driver which is from 2020, but that's just my theory. So yeah, you may not be able to run a Assassin's Creed Unity on the Intel HD 4000, 2500, Ivy Bridge and Beige Rail, but you could run it on any other Intel HD graphics based on the 4th gen Haswell architecture and newer, including 
the Intel HD 4400. Intel HD 400 included in the Celeron N3150, N3060, etc. And even the Intel HD Graphics Cherry Trail included in Intel Atom processors of the same family. Don't expect good FPS of course, but at least it should run without crashing I think. I've seen videos of people playing this game on the HD 5450, which is probably the weakest dedicated graphics card that supports DirectX 11.0. So I guess that's it for this fun little experiment. It's a bit for shame that there isn't much you can do to get better FPS in Assassin's Creed Unity aside from maybe using worse scaling and I'm also a little bit sad that the game crashes on my legendary Celeron but then again the fact that it can open what remains one of the most demanding AAA titles to this very day rivaling even Red Dead Redemption 2 is absolutely crazy and it did run relatively well on the Intel HD 630 so I'm still impressed and I'm sure you guys also are. If you're still here, you can also check out my Assassin's Creed Origins Luck Fix video. The interesting thing from that video is that for some reason, Origins, unlike Unity, works without any crashing on the Intel HD Bay Trail. Hmm, maybe I should make another video of me playing Assassin's Creed Origins on the super low-end laptop.